Whenever you've worked with asbestos, it's important that you clean up the work site. Thorough cleaning will minimise the spread of asbestos fibres that may have been released by your work. Asbestos fibres may be invisible to the naked eye, so it's important you follow decontamination procedures even if the work area appears to be dust free. When setting up the asbestos work area, it's important to have a decontamination area adjacent to the asbestos work area. This should consist of a dirty decontamination area drop sheet inside the asbestos removal work area and a second drop sheet just outside the work area for decontaminated items. When decontaminating your work site, there are a number of key steps which must be followed in the correct sequence. First, any equipment or tools you've used should be cleaned using wet wipes and moved to the decontaminated area drop sheet. Any tools or equipment which cannot be decontaminated and needs to be reused for asbestos related work should be double bagged into asbestos waste bags. These tools may only be removed in asbestos work areas while wearing full PPE. Anything that can't be cleaned or reused should be discarded as asbestos waste. Then the drop sheets should be vacuumed to remove all visible dust and debris. Place the nozzle of the vacuum cleaner on its side so you don't suck up the polythene sheets. Then, with your protective garment still on, step off the drop sheet. Wrap it to contain any stray asbestos fibres and dispose of it in a waste bag. Before personal decontamination takes place, the asbestos waste bag should be sealed. Once you've disposed of the drop sheet, stay in one place if possible to minimise the risk of particle spread while removing your outer protective garments. For personal decontamination, first use the HEPA filter vacuum cleaner where available to clean off your boots, disposable overshoes and coveralls. Asbestos vacuum cleaners, including the hose and attachments, should be wet wiped after use. The hose should be disconnected from the vacuum and sealed at both ends with tape. All openings to the vacuum cleaner should also be sealed with tape. The vacuum, including hoses, attachments and leads, should be double bagged and sealed in an asbestos waste bag. The bag should be twisted tightly, folded over and the neck secured in the folded position with adhesive tape or any other effective method. Then use a spray water bottle to apply a light mist of water to your disposable outer garments. This will help to suppress any fibres which may be left after the vacuuming. Where no asbestos vacuum cleaner is available to clean your PPE, sufficient water should be used to wet down your disposable outer garments. The first items to remove are your disposable coveralls, which should be unzipped and then folded in on themselves as they're removed. Discard the overshoes and coveralls as asbestos waste into a waste bag. Remove your gloves and place them in the asbestos waste bag. Now it's time to remove the respirator. First, spray a light mist of water onto your face to suppress any fibres. Then remove the respirator by lifting it up away from the breathing zone. Disposable respirators should be discarded into the waste bag and then the sealed asbestos waste bag wet wiped and sealed inside a second asbestos waste bag and sealed gooseneck style. 
If you are using a rubber half face mask, discard the pre-filter into the waste bag, then wet wipe the whole mask and dispose of the wipes as asbestos waste. If the filter cartridge to the rubber half face mask needs replacing, spray exposed filter cartridge with a light mist spray, remove and place into the waste bag. Otherwise, seal face of cartridge with duct tape or purpose designed cartridge blank. The respirator should be stored in a sealed container and only opened in an asbestos work area. Finally, go to the nearest wash-up area and thoroughly wash your hands and face.